On February 17, 2018, 20-year-old Ryan Stuka vanished without a trace from the ski resort town of Sun Peaks, located in British Columbia, Canada. Ryan, an Alberta native and avid snowboarder, had gone to live and work in Sun Peaks for the winter while figuring out what direction he wanted to take his life. Sadly, whatever dreams or goals he had in mind would never come to fruition. Ryan had gone to a bar called Moss's on the night of February 16th with his friend James, who was living with him in a house and also working at the resort. The bar was located on resort property. Another bar on property that sat adjacent to Moss's was Bottoms, which Ryan James and some of their friends decided to hit up as well. At this bar, a silent disco event was being held. A silent disco, for those who may not know, involves attendees receiving their own pair of headphones to hear the music that the DJ is playing. So we have to wonder just how aware Ryan could have been of his surroundings with music blaring directly into his ears. The night grew late, but even by 1am, Ryan and his friends decided they still weren't ready to call it a night. They heard tell of a house party going on nearby, so they decided to make that their next stop. The house was located near where James and Ryan lived, so they figured popping in and having one last drink couldn't hurt. The house was located on Burfield Drive. To get there, the friends caught a ride to the bottom of the hill on which the bar sat, and then walked to the house. The trip from the bar to the house wasn't long, taking roughly 10 minutes, if that. By 1.30, James was ready to go. He saw Ryan stand up and assumed he was behind him as he and the rest of their friends were walking out. However, at some point during their walk home, which was only a short way, they noticed that Ryan wasn't with them. They all decided that perhaps Ryan changed his mind and wanted to stay longer at the party and would catch up later. Temperatures were below freezing and they all wanted to get to the warmth of their homes quickly. They also could have been thinking that Ryan could take care of himself, being a sturdy young man, six feet tall and 180 pounds. Besides, with a population under a thousand, where everyone seemed to know everyone else, Sun Peaks didn't seem to be the sort of place where Ryan would run into any dangerous strangers. Not questioning where Ryan went any further, the group of friends returned home. By the time James went to bed, Ryan still hadn't returned home, and by the time he woke up, Ryan wasn't in his bed. James didn't worry at first, thinking perhaps Ryan crashed on someone's couch or went home with a girl, the type of thing that happened often at Sun Peaks, but upon coming into work at the ski lift and not seeing Ryan there, James started to grow worried. That night, he contacted Ryan's mom, Heather telling her of Ryan's disappearance and that he had reported him missing. He'd checked with all his friends in town and even called the local hospital to see if maybe Ryan had ended up there before finally calling the police, who acted quickly. The same night, Heather Stuka received the call from James about her son's disappearance. Police told Ryan's father, Scott, that they already had a canine unit searching the area between the Burfield Drive house and Ryan and James's place. They said they would put together a full search party if the dogs weren't able to immediately track Ryan down, which would convene first thing in the morning. Ryan's parents, feeling shocked and helpless, resolved to make the nine-hour drive to Sun Peaks to find their son, leaving their two daughters, ages 18 and 12, in the care of their grandmother. They left at 10.30 that night, the drive was emotionally fraught, with Scott having to pull over every 15 minutes or so to regain his bearings. Heather received a phone call from police at 2 a.m., but otherwise heard nothing, causing her and Scott to begin imagining the worst as they continued their journey to find their son. Heather called it both the longest and shortest drive of her life. The Stukas arrived at Sun Peaks at 6 a.m. the following morning. 
more than eight inches of new snow had fallen since Ryan's disappearance. Though it would seem this would hamper the search effort by covering up clues, officials were actually quite confident that Ryan, if he'd passed out somewhere, would be found buried under the snow. The search dogs from the night before, strangely enough, hadn't picked up Ryan's scent at the Burfield Drive house at all. As you can see, Ryan's house and the house where the party was being held are on separate roads and separated by a patch of woods. It would seem that the quickest way to get from one house to the other would be to cut through the woods, which Ryan may very well have tried. If so, it would have been a treacherous walk. Even circumventing the woods and walking the roads to his house wouldn't have been all that safe, especially without street lamps or sidewalks. Police and search and rescue teams scoured the area between houses thoroughly, even implementing helicopters and drones to search from above for any sign of Ryan. However, they could find no trace of him. The search lasted for 18 hours and was suspended just before midnight on February 18th. No spot of the area between where Ryan was and where he lived was left untouched. Authorities now had to consider other areas where Ryan might have gone missing. They spoke to everyone who was at the party, and while they all reported Ryan was there, no one said they recalled seeing him leave or indicating that he planned to go anywhere after the party except home. We also should note that there was drinking at this party, and drugs, and it's possible Ryan's judgment was impaired by alcohol or other substances, causing him to lose his way. Perhaps he left out the back of the house and into the wilderness, in the opposite direction of home. To this day, no substantial clues as to Ryan's whereabouts have been found. Security cameras at the entrance and within the resort recorded nothing, as they hadn't been working when Ryan disappeared. Someone did say they saw a man matching Ryan's description on Fairway Drive at 1.55 a.m. on February 17th although it isn't clear if Ryan would have still been at the party at this time. A text received by one of Ryan's roommates suggests he might have left the party at 1.30 or 1.45, though the police had been given 2.10 as the last time anyone saw him. It's been suggested that after the party, Ryan decided to go to a popular late-night pizza place before heading home. We also know his phone pinged at 3 a.m. the night he vanished, though no details have been released about this. A Sun Peaks resident came forward to say he heard an angry man scream something to the effect of get into the car in the early morning hours of the 17th. But other than these faint clues, progress on the case has simply gone nowhere. It's been theorized that Ryan died at the party of an overdose and his body hastily hidden by the panicked partygoers. It's also been theorized that Ryan was hit by a car and disposed of in a faraway location. No one truly knows, though, and today the fate of Ryan Stuka remains a mystery. Ryan's parents left Sun Peaks and returned home in May 2018 after months of looking for their son. Every month they returned to Sun Peaks to continue their search. Please keep the Stukas and all of Ryan's family and friends in your thoughts as they continue their valiant efforts to bring Ryan home. If you have any information that may help in the case, please see the link to the website devoted to Ryan in the description where you can submit a tip. Thank you guys, stay safe out there, and remember, don't get scared out of sorts.